Look around. Okay, across the street, we have a delivery truck carrying food. The offices, construction sites all around. Sheetrock, where'd it come from? On a truck, nothing moves without us. Many owner operators now are homeless. They cannot afford to have a home. This is my home. I live with my truck. Whether I stay in a hotel or I sleep sitting up in the driver's seat. This is my home. Why? I work 12 to 14 plus hours a day, but I don't earn enough. This is Billy Randall. He's been a long-haul trucker for over 30 years. We're working on a new series now about jobs in America that used to be stable and middle class and are all but gone. One of the most dramatic shifts from good job to bad job is in the trucking industry. Trucking is one of the most coveted blue-collar jobs in America. The average trucker made $110,000 a year. That's enough to raise a family. Which is not that great, assuming you have to own the truck. Like, that gives you some autonomy. But, I mean, the one trucker that I knew could basically afford a house in a cheaper area, and uh, but not, could not afford to see their family that much. A family and have a home. Now many of them, like Billy, are barely making minimum wage. We're tired of being the back of the economy because our backs are broken. We're gonna unpack exactly what happened through the stories of two truckers that are struggling. One who's been a driver for decades and one who's trying to make a life for himself in the industry. This is the classroom for more perfect union. And today we're looking at why truckers can't make a living. All hours work, all hours pay. And then Billy at a rally in DC with the truckers movement for justice. Billy's a little bit of a wild man. He's currently trying to lead strikes in the coal mines of West Virginia and the oil fields of Texas, and I think he might pull it off. Billy has a vision. The truckers will be organized again after 40 years of not having power. Let's go back a little bit. This might be what you think of when you think of a trucker. An outlaw, a gondola with nothing to lose. But in reality, a lot of them look pretty- That's not what I was thinking. Hmm. I guess a union could work. But can you unionize the whole country? Um, I'm doubtful. Pretty regular lives and went home to their families every night. It was a hard, dirty job. But it was a good job. The truckers I met in Washington all had the same complaints. I'm working out first, I'll put me out of bed. I tell my boss my company, I want to lose my jobs. I don't want to lose my home. The pay is low, the cost of doing business is high. Sounds like someone's business is putting these guys out of business. Let's get back to Billy. Like 350,000 other drivers in America, Billy is an owner operator, meaning he owns his own truck. It also means he's responsible for the overhead, repairs, insurance, maintenance. And if something goes wrong, it can cost him. Today, the truck broke down. A very minor repair, but nonetheless, it created a problem with the delivery. I've got, not to publicize this, $1,200 to my name. Truckers like to say if you bought it, a truck brought it. Truckers take great pride in that work. So he's also one breakdown away from um, over. But that work can often be pretty tough for them. This is Steve Maselli, a former truck driver who's been studying the industry for over a decade. Steve says one of the main causes of wage decreases was deregulation. Before the 1930s, trucking was unregulated and stuck in boom and bust cycles. The economy would be strong and things would be moving in trucks. And then suddenly there would be a downturn and truckers were out of work. Trucking is so crucial to the economy that in 1935, the federal government started heavily regulating the industry by setting shipping prices and limits on how many trucks could be on the road. The federal government essentially set the rates for trucks. If you were going to move steel from Youngstown to New York, you would go to something called the Interstate Commerce Commission, and you would say to them, hey, my costs to move this steel are a dollar a mile. And the Interstate Commerce Commission would say, okay, then you can charge $1. six per mile to your customers, whether it's U.S. steel or a mom-and-pop machine shop that needs to move it. Freight was moved from terminal to terminal, where local deliveries would combine smaller loads together and send them to the next terminal through long-haul truckers. What that meant for drivers was a lot of them were home every night, and they had regular schedules. It also meant that those terminals were easier to unionize. The whole industry was unionized and regulated under the National Master Freight Agreement, negotiated by the Teamsters, which was one of the most powerful unions in the United States. The battle ended when Jimmy Carter signed the Motor Carrier Act of 1980. So that was the golden age of trucking. In an effort to lower prices for consumers, this was a bipartisan effort. You probably don't think of truckers as timid people, but that's because you haven't seen how some of them react when you say competition. Republicans, Democrats, and industry were all involved. And in a way... Damn, screwed by everyone. What competition? Deregulation worked. Pri <laughs> They'll unite to screw the truckers. Prices went down for consumers and rates went down for shippers. And it opened up competition. So the larger stores, think Walmart, Kmart, Costco, could handle for lower prices. Remember that under... Yeah. And who paid for it? The truckers? The government set shipping prices for all stores, big and small. So deregulation brought us a lot of cheap shipping that we live in now. What that meant for truck drivers was a lot of really bad jobs. Thousands of smaller trucking companies went out of business in the 1980s. And something else changed that made the job harder. Freight started moving point to point, from the shipper's location all the way to the customer. For drivers, that means that, you know, they're living out of the truck. Uh, they're essentially working 24 hours a day, and they can't know exactly when they're going to be home. And the thing is, truckers don't make overtime. That's right. Truckers are one of the few workers that are exempt from overtime in our labor laws. So a trucker can be working 100 hours a week and not make close to minimum wage. All of these changes have created a labor crisis. The turnover rate at most companies is now well over 100%. That's why every year the American Trucking Association claims there's a driver shortage. 80,000 drivers short amid the supply chain crisis has historic trucker shortage again. And in less than a decade, it's projected to get even worse. Billy is 71 years old. If there's a shortage, the job just sucks. And the average driver is 48 years old. The industry needs younger drivers to enter the business and stay. Like Caleb Fernandez. Unlike Billy, he's a company driver, and he's paid by the mile. He also uses the company's truck. While Caleb doesn't have the same expenses as Billy, he has to worry about something else. Surveillance. The biggest problem solving that I do in my day is working so that I can be legal in the regulations. In 2017, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration introduced electronic logging devices. So I've got six hours left that I can work until tomorrow. These logs are meant to keep the drivers from working too long, and to make sure they take... Yeah, it's definitely not to serve him. So he doesn't own the truck, and these uh, just the spy them constantly. So this guy doesn't have much leverage. To take breaks. But what it really does is mess with trucker autonomy. It tracks my location and knows if I've been moving the truck around, so I can't lie and say that I've been uh, driving less hours than I have been. So it lets you know <laughs> on the e-log if you're doing something illegal, it'll warn you, hey, wait a minute. Drivers start the clock and have 14 hours to work before they have to take a 10-hour rest. During that shift, they can only drive for 11 hours and take 3 hours for stops or deliveries. The problem is, they might get stuck waiting on a load, or they might break down, or they might have to take a long nap, but the clock keeps running. All our shippers and receivers will be unreliable in terms of their appointment times, and so then that can ruin my hours of service. It can also ruin my next pickup or drop. That can be pretty stressful as well. And because a lot of drivers like Caleb are paid by the mile, they want to keep moving. It forces drivers to drive in dangerous conditions when they're tired. Truckers have been keeping long 
yeah, you should you have 14 hour work days? Uh, I don't think so. Also, lying and speeding <laughs> while you're tired to possibly get paid, not that great. Logs for decades, but before they were paper logs, and the fact is, those were easier to fake. And look, we're not advocating for cheating. These safety regulations are really important. No one wants drivers on the road that have been working for too long or who are tired. The problem is, these e-logs are really don't we? Sounds like the businesses kind of want them. Restrictive, and drivers can't make their own schedule. The laws as they're written are really hard to follow. And besides, e-logs aren't actually making. If they're hard to follow, it's probably on purpose. Safer. A 2019 study showed that since the e-logs were introduced, accidents didn't go down. They stayed about the same, but something else went up. Drivers were speeding more to make up for the lost time on the road. <laughs> we put them in this. Working is intended. You know, trade-off between, you know, their paycheck and, and safety, unfortunately. Billy thinks that one way to encourage safe driving is to increase pay. Then drivers aren't as worried about racing for the next load and the next paycheck. We want to be paid. All hours work, all hours paid. We're sitting loading and unloading for more than 30 minutes at a given facility and we want to be paid for it. If that bullshit 1980s policy wasn't about just ripping off the truckers, then their salary would have stayed the same. Billy and Caleb both love what they do and want to stay in the industry. We started this video looking at why trucking used to be a good job and why it isn't anymore. Deregulation made a lot of products cheap, really cheap, but at a serious cost to workers. Like Billy said, nothing moves in this country without truckers, and they should get paid for all the time they're working. There's a bill right now that would change the Fair Labor Standards Act and make truckers eligible for overtime. Second, safety regulations need to give drivers more flexibility. Truckers can track their time and take breaks without such strict oversight. And Billy thinks that ultimately the job won't get any better unless drivers themselves take action. It wasn't like this when we were organized, and we're the only ones that can change it. Owner operators and company drivers. I am I am doubting. But he's not wrong. If he somehow unionized the whole country, then uh, he could do it. Although, AI trucks will come in, so... When we organize, then things will change. Thanks for watching The Classroom for more Perfect Union. Like we said, we're starting this new series about jobs in America that used to be middle class and aren't anymore. Are you...